Hey guys, Hades here. All right, today we're going to look at random part two. Now I've already <laughs> released this uh, a live class, but I didn't get enough feedback uh, <laughs> on whether you prefer live or this way. So for the first two, random and random two, we're going to do both. Then random three, I think I'll only do live, and then four and five, I will only do this way. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, please leave a comment if you prefer one way or another. All right, so random stuff part two. I liked this picture, uh, so it's on here. All right, what does random mean? What does inflammable mean? What does flammable mean? Random can mean unpredictable, assorted, undistinguished, or items that appear in no particular order. Uh, random, right? Something, not, not something planned out. Flammable means something that can easily catch fire. Inflammable means something that can easily catch fire. They mean the same thing. Basically, they used to put inflammable, like inflame, right? Something that catches fire on products. And often, right, in English, if you put the IN prefix in front of another word, it means the opposite. But in this case, it did not. And it confused a lot of people, and <laughs> some people caught things on fire because they thought it was not flammable. So they started using the word flammable just to make people more aware. So both of those words mean the same thing. Inflammable has actually been used longer than flammable. They mean the same thing. Random image. Uh, <laughs> a number of students like this particular picture. Okay, I actually have this section in another PowerPoint that I may get to or I may not. What is America? What is South America? How many countries are in South America? What is the biggest country in South America? What languages are spoken in South America? America is not a country, but actually two continents. The country most people call America is actually the United States of America. I think that started in the UK when they colonized it. Uh, <laughs> And because that's where we get English from, right, up to today, we might still call the USA just America. But technically, there's two continents that are America, South America and North America. The USA is located in North America. South America is a continent located near North America, or actually pretty much south of North America. There are 12 countries in South America. There are two territories belonging to other countries in South America. And Brazil is the largest country in South America. That is not just the, the space, the amount of land it takes up, but also the population is the largest as well. I would say most nations speak Spanish in South America. The people of Brazil speak Portuguese. Dutch is spoken in Suriname. The official language of Guiana is English. And French is spoken in French Guiana. OK, let's look at these countries. I've, I think, alph alphabetized them. So the countries of South America are Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Guyana, 
Paraguay, Peru, Suriname, Uruguay, Venezuela, and then we have two areas that are not countries, they're territories of other countries. French Guiana is a territory of France, and the Falkland Islands are territories of the UK. And there are also some other islands near South or Central America that I did not put in here. Random image. Again, I just type random image online and then I pick one to put in these things. What does RHPS stand for? I'll give you a hint, it's a movie. What is an audio vibratory physiomolecular transport device? RHPS stands for the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Of course, uh, the rest of that is irrelevant. I used to I used to do the Halloween when I was in Wuhan. I was in charge of the Halloween party. We called it ECA, extracurricular activity. And I often made it Rocky Horror Picture Show themed. I really liked that movie when I was younger. I suppose I still like it, but you know, I'm tired of it. I watched it too much, probably. An audio vibratory physiomolecular transport device does not really exist. It's just in that movie. Uh, but I always thought it was fun to, to break these words down, look at them individually, and try to decide what they mean. What does audio mean? What does vibratory mean? What does molecular mean? What does transport mean? And what does device mean? Audio is hearing or something that is heard. Vibratory is something that vibrates. Physio is related to nature or biology or physical functions. And molecular is the adjective of the word molecule. Transport is movement or shipping of an object, objects, people, or animals. And device is a tool or a machine. It is basically a machine that can move someone through space and time. A time machine, right? They called it an audio vibratory physiomolecular transport device. Now, I don't know why they felt it necessary to put audio or vibratory in that uh, description. It doesn't help, but, <laughs> but the rest maybe helps a little. Right? The rest is more descriptive. Again, this is a fictional device. It's not real. <laughs> According to the character, Dr. Scott is a device of capable of breaking down solid matter and then projecting it through space and who knows, perhaps even time itself. Random Rocky Horror Picture Show image. Uh, this movie is not for everyone. So a lot of people don't like it. I really like the songs. Uh, it was a good movie, uh, but it's not for everyone. It's very strange. Check it out if you'd like to. All right, some random trivia. Who wrote The Raven? How many hours a day does an elephant sleep? What European city did the Romans call Lutetia? Meaning there's a city today that we call by a different name, but the ancient Romans called it Lutetia. Can lions and tigers mate? Edgar 
Edgar Allan Poe wrote The Raven, quite a popular uh, uh, figure in American literature. The Raven, uh, probably his most popular poem. He also wrote a lot of short stories that were horror, and he's attributed to writing the first mystery or detective novel. I quite like Edgar Allan Poe. If ever you take a class on American literature, you'll probably look at Edgar Allan Poe a little bit. Once upon a midnight dreary, as I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, as I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Elephants, on average, sleep about four hours a day. Giraffes also sleep about four hours a day. Koalas, on average, sleep about 20 hours a day. Now, you guys, I can't guarantee how accurate some information I give is. Uh, <laughs> I find weird stuff online and I repeat it. If you know this to be false or some of the other stuff you know to be false, let me know in the comments. Uh, I find information. Sometimes I don't verify it through a second, <laughs> uh, second piece of media. So I just get this information and I put it on here. Um, I think it's right, but I could be wrong about some of the stuff I put in these. Lutetia is the ancient Roman name for the city of Paris. The Romans referred to the people and area that is now France as Gaul. The ancient uh, language of the Romans uh, is Latin. It is now a dead language. And a dead language means that no one speaks it as their first language. Some people still speak Latin, but no one <laughs> learns Latin as a baby. No one speaks Latin as their first language, so it's considered a dead language. Lions and tigers can successfully breed. If the father is a tiger and the mother is a lion, the offspring is called a liger. If the father is a lion and the mother is a tiger, the offspring is called a tigon. Now, with that said, this doesn't happen often. Also, that lower picture <laughs> is photoshopped. That's not real. Um, they only breed in captivity. In the wild, they avoid each other. If <laughs> If they encountered each other, most likely they'd run away or maybe fight each other, attack each other. They wouldn't normally want to mate in the wild. So they've only been bred in captivity, but they have successfully been bred together. Their genes are close enough to where you can actually breed them. Again, this does not happen in the wild. And again, that bottom picture is photoshopped. It's not real. Random image. I thought that was funny. Uh, my students don't seem to think it's that funny. Okay, let's look at some vocabulary. What is a hypocrite? What does obsequious mean? What does involuntary mean? What does sacrilegious mean? And what does clandestine mean? A hypocrite. A hypocrite is a person given to hypocrisy, one pretending to have morals that he or she doesn't have, or one who tells people how to behave when he or she doesn't behave that way. An example, Jason is always smoking cigarettes, yet he tells me not to smoke. What a hypocrite. Obsequious. Obsequious means subservient, fawning, giving complete compliance to the wishes of another. Example, the cult members were all obsequious, doing anything their leader required. Involuntary 
Involuntary means the opposite of voluntary, done other than in accordance with the will of the person doing it. Example, I had to do the involuntary task of cleaning the office today because my boss ordered me to. And on the pictures over there, they talk about involuntary muscles. Muscles that work without you telling them to, like your heart, right? You don't control your heartbeat. It just involuntarily beats. Sacrilegious. Sacrilegious means going against one's religion, doing something that one's religion dictates as wrong. Example, murder is probably the most sacrilegious thing you can do. Clandestine. Clandestine is an adjective that describes things that are secret or hidden without the knowledge of most. We had to keep our meetings clandestine so that others would not find out what we were planning. Here's a random image. I think this one's funny. Uh, <laughs> so it says 100% uh, of men didn't notice King Kong is on the picture. Why is that funny? It's funny, right, because <laughs> Men would just notice the, the woman because she's pretty, right? And they might not notice that there's a gorilla in the background. So I thought that was humorous. Also, we're going to end on this one. This is about halfway through. So we'll end on this one. I'm keeping this kind of short. And we'll have the second one out sometime soon. Okay, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Please leave a like and a comment. And, of course, subscribe if you haven't. Thank you.